Now, the thing about our native language knowledge is that most of it actually isn't conscious. And what I mean is that we know it, but we don't know how we know it or necessarily why it's so. We just know what it is. And let me show you some examples of this. So here's some things you probably know. So let's look at this new thing, this new product, say. And hey, we should name this product for an English-speaking market. And we have, say, two options. We could call it a strimp or a stvimp. Now think about it for a moment. Which one sounds more English-like? Well, if you think about it, strimp, stvimp. Well, it seems like strimp does. Stevimp just doesn't sound English. And so what you know, if you are an English speaker, you know what sounds go together to sound English-like, even if you've never heard these words before. And let's also think about how to pronounce the S at the ends of some words, so words like cats and dogs. So what we're going to do is we're going to say the word, or you can think about it. It's easier if you say it out loud and hold that last sound. Okay? So let's do it first with cats. Ready? One, two, three. Cats. Okay, it's a s kind of sound. Now let's do it for dogs. Ready? One, two, three. Dogs. Oh, that's a zzz sound. Cats. Dogs. Right? These actually sound different. You know that actually as a speaker of English. This one here sounds like an S. This one sounds like a Z, even though they both use the same letter. Right? So as an English speaker, you know that these S sounds are pronounced differently. Okay, let's look at some other things you know. Let's figure out who this word she could be in some sentences. Now, she is a word. It's a funny little word. It's called a pronoun. But you have to interpret she yourself it be based on the context. She can change its meaning, who she refers to, depending on what's going on in the surrounding context. So let's maybe try to figure out who she could be in some sentences. Okay. So here's a sentence. While she was wearing a hat, Lindy laughed. So here's a question. Could she here be Lindy? Could she equal Lindy? Right? So what I'm basically asking is, can while she was wearing a hat, Lindy laughed, can that sentence mean while Lindy was wearing a hat, Lindy laughed? So let's think about it. While she was wearing a hat, Lindy laughed. While Lindy was wearing a hat, Lindy laughed. It, it does feel like she could be Lindy here. Let's look at another sentence that's pretty similar. While Lindy was wearing a hat, she laughed. Can she equal Lindy? Can this mean, while Lindy was wearing a hat, Lindy laughed? So let's think about it again. While Lindy was wearing a hat, she laughed. Can she be Lindy? And if you think about it for a moment, it does feel like, yeah, yeah, she could be Lindy. Great. Let's look at another one that's, again, pretty similar. Lindy laughed while she was wearing a hat. Can she be Lindy? Can this mean Lindy laughed while Lindy was wearing a hat? Okay, Lindy laughed while she was wearing a hat. Can she be Lindy? Yeah, it does feel like this could mean Lindy was the one wearing the hat. Okay, so let's try one more. She laughed while Lindy was wearing a hat. Can she be Lindy? Can this mean Lindy laughed while Lindy was wearing a hat. So let's think about that. She laughed while Lindy was wearing a hat. Huh. It, it feels like, no, actually, she cannot be Lindy. She has to be somebody else, some other she. Maybe, maybe me, right? Her mother watching her. Lisa laughed while Lindy was wearing a hat. She could be Lisa, but she has to be someone else. She cannot be Lindy here. She laughed while Lindy was wearing a hat. We don't. We don't like to interpret she as Lindy in this case, even though we were fine interpreting she as Lindy and all these other examples. So as an English speaker, you know how to interpret pronouns like she this way, these kind of funny constraints or restrictions like this one. Let's do a little bit more. Let's figure out what the nonsense word dax refers to in this picture. This actually comes uh, from a very famous set of experiments by Brown in 1957. 
So here it is. He's daxing, talking about this picture. What does dax refer to? He's daxing. Huh, what, what is dax talking about? Well, it seems like it's probably talking about the action that the hands are doing. He's daxing makes you think dax is the action. Okay. What about if I say, look, a dax, talking about this. And you're like, oh, uh, a dax. One thing seems to be what I'm looking for. A single object, the bowl. That, that seems to be what dax means here. And then change it slightly. Look, some dax. Oh, well, now I'm not looking for a single object, some dax. Now I'm looking for stuff, which is probably this confetti like substance, right? So just by changing what I'm saying, the linguistic information, the language information that's surrounding the word dax, I can change what dax refers to. And you know that. And as an English speaker, you know how to use the language surrounding an unknown word like Dax, a nonsense word, to figure out what it refers to. This ability is actually something that we, we can use not just for these made-up examples. It's something that we can use for very famous things like Lewis Carroll's Jabberwocky poem. We can use the surrounding language to make sense of the nonsense words. And that's what makes the Jabberwocky poem so enjoyable and in some sense understandable. So let me just give you, for those of you who are, are not familiar, let me just give you the opening stanza from Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. And what I have here in purple are the surrounding language and then in, in turquoise here are the, uh, the nonsense words that you have to interpret or get some sense of on the basis of the language that surrounds them, okay? Twas brillig, and the slithy toads did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves and the moan wraths outgrabe. And it continues on in this way, but even though you don't know what these words mean exactly, you have some sense that maybe twas brillig is, a, is sort of a, a property. Toves are things. Gyre and gimbal are actions, right? You have this same kind of sense of how to interpret them, the same way you did with Dax, because you know how to use the surrounding language to interpret unknown words.